Hey everybody, I'm back at it again with a video on fair evasion, a famously interesting topic that one can make many jokes about. New York City has the largest subway system in the world, and to get access to all 472 beautiful stations, one must pay the entrance fee of $2.75. While that's not expensive, it can add up. Someone who needs to take the subway to work twice a day, five days a week, will end up paying $1,430 a year just to get to their job. Now, having to pay money to get into a box that shakes and moves around is already bad enough, but what makes it even worse is that fare evasion, aka getting onto the subway without paying the fare, has been heavily prosecuted as a crime. Recently, hundreds of new cops have been hired to arrest fare evaders, which has cost the city a ton of money. So why the heck they do it? I tell you right now. As I just said, fare evasion is when, through various methods, a person avoids paying the $2.75 fare to get onto the subway. This can be done by jumping the turnstile or going through the emergency exit door. Not that you should be doing that! <laughs> it's the sort of crime you can't really imagine the city enforcing that harshly, like jaywalking or police brutality. When fare evasion is enforced, as it has been recently, it can net the criminal a $100 fine and a night in prison. You can hopefully see why this is strange. The fare evaders would most likely be people who can't afford the fare, and therefore wouldn't be able to afford a fine 36 times that amount. And when we look into the other stuff the MTA gives out fines for, we can see that the poor are going to be disproportionately affected every single time. Like, look at this shit. Non-transit use of facilities can net you a $50 fine. That means homeless people who need shelter under subway stations are not only gonna get kicked out into the cold, but they're gonna get a $50 bill. Another one that jumped out to me was unauthorized trash removal, which costs you $100. Why charge people for taking trash? They're doing your job for you. Anyway, looking at this list, we can see that the MTA has a lot of bullshit things they charge people for, and most of them hurt the poor more than they hurt the wealthy. Also, an arrest for fare evasion can really hurt. Fare evasion is considered a crime involving moral turpitude, which is a deportable offense for undocumented immigrants. People in New York City are getting arrested by ICE because they don't have three dollars. Also, sometimes the punishment is way worse than what's written on paper. On October 28th, NYPD officers beat and drew guns on an unarmed teenager who evaded the fare. Um, maybe a disproportionate response. In November 2019, the chief financial officer of the MTA announced that the state would be hiring 500 new police officers to solely combat fare evasion, which would cost New York $249 million. This is crazy, especially considering that the MTA only lost $200 million to fare evasion in 2018. So that's weird. Why would they do that? Could New York police hate poor people? What? When I was researching this video, I thought a logical step would be to download the police arrest data to see if poor people and minorities were affected disproportionately by the crackdown. The data I'm using is from the second quarter of 2019, which is honestly my favorite quarter of the year. The top 10 stations where fare evasion took place, which are listed on the screen, are surrounded by neighborhoods which have a median household income of around $34,000. The median household income of New York City is $58,000. This means that New York City's poorest neighborhoods are where fare evasion is prosecuted the most. What was similarly clear was just how disproportionately non-white the arrests were. In the top 10 stations, 101 black people were arrested compared to just 14 white people. That means that 90.5% of the arrests made in these stations were of non-white people. So. Looking at this statistic, I thought the main reason for the huge disparity was institutional racism, and this is mostly true. To illustrate my point, let's look at J Street Metro Tech Station, where the highest number of fare evasion arrests were made. In Census Tract 15, which is right next to the station, the median income of a white family is $152,000. The median income for a black family is $25,000. This is an insane disparity, and it means that even though the neighborhood is 37% white, only 8% of those living in poverty are white. This difference in racial wealth is due to institutional racism, part of which includes redlining, a policy which segregates New York to this day. In the 1930s, the Federal Housing Administration was created to insure mortgages. To determine where the money would go, they had maps drawn of racial boundaries in New York City. 
areas with a high population of minorities did not receive funding from the government, while white neighborhoods got a lot. This caused racial disparities that persist to this day, and it's the reason why white families in District 15 have eight times the wealth of black families. Also, I talked to Mayor de Blasio, and he told me he hates minorities and poor people, and that he's gonna run for president every year. So, looks like that's crazy. But institutional racism isn't the only reason for the large number of minority arrests. The NYPD is way more likely to arrest a poor black person for evading the fair than a poor white person. A 2017 report by the Community Service Society states, quote, poverty alone doesn't explain racial disparities in fair evasion arrests. Although 29% of New Yorkers living in poverty are black, 66% of fair evasion arrests are black. So the issue isn't just redlining, but also discrimination from the police. Now I get if you're skeptical, because the NYPD has famously been a force for good in New York City. Brooklyn Nine-Nine said so. They're so good, in fact, that I found an article online called Top 5 Worst NYPD Brutality Moments. Thanks, Watchamojo! <laughs> Going back to the report, there are multiple reasons why the NYPD would arrest black people at a higher rate than we'd expect. The first and most obvious reason is racism. Quote, Police officers always have some degree of discretion when it comes to making arrests for low-level offenses such as fair evasion. This description opens the door to biases that correlate with race, ethnicity, age, and gender. AKA, police be racist. Another reason is the rise in broken windows policing. In the 90s, the NYPD started arresting people for crimes like jaywalking or fare evasion, which they believed would help the city maintain order and help keep higher level crimes from occurring. There's no real evidence that this tactic helped, but there is evidence that it disproportionately impacted young men of color. But Becca, I hear you say loudly into your screen, sure, the NYPD might hate minorities and poor people, but I still don't understand why they chose to sink so much money into this. I get what you're saying, and in order to answer this question, we need to enter conspiracy mode. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're entering conspiracy mode. Terror. Hacking in progress. I'm trying to get in, but the firewall is secure. Terror. Conspiracy mode activated. Conspiracy mode. mode. Okay, so, the crime rate in New York City has been decreasing massively since the 1990s. In 1990, the NYPD received 527,000 crime complaints. In 2019, they received only 95,000. This means that crime has decreased by a factor of five in the past 30 years. Despite this, the number of police officers has remained around the same. Logically, this means that police officers have less work to do each year. Currently, a number of former police officers are suing the NYPD for essentially issuing arrest quotas for minorities while letting white people off the hook. An NYPD commander, quote, instructed officers to think of white and Asian people as soft targets and urged them to instead go after blacks and Latinos for minor offenses like jumping the turnstile. The report I referenced earlier corroborates this story. According to the Community Service Society, policing low-level crimes at a high rate creates a system where officers are expected to maintain high arrest volumes. This can effectively establish a quota system that institutionalizes the over-policing of low-level offenses in predominantly minority neighborhoods. So, the reason fair evasion is being focused on so heavily is because police are running out of things to do. In a city with decreasing crime, the only way they can meet established quotas is to start prosecuting bullshit crimes like fare evasion. Allegedly. Conspiracy mode off. <laughs> the heavy policing surrounding fare evasion pisses me off. It's public transportation. It should be free for everybody. Why the fuck does the MTA not only cost money, but will arrest you if you don't pay $3 for a subway ride? It's fucking draconic. And they're focusing on such a small loss of money. As I said earlier, fair evasion costs the city $200 million, right? Yet the city's giving billions of dollars in tax breaks to Hudson Yards and Amazon. Make them pay their fucking taxes instead of arresting poor people for not giving you $3. Meanwhile, two of New York's mayors are running for president, and Michael Bloomberg is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a bullshit campaign that has 5% in the polls. Use that money to make the subways free, you p Anyway, the way we fight over-policing is by building community on the ground. We need to build strong organizations that can protect neighborhoods from police that only give a shit about meeting quotas. 
Here are some groups that are trying to do that. The Legal Aid Society, Brooklyn Defender Services, and the Bronx Defenders are all organizations that are attempting to quote, decriminalize poverty and limit discrimination through sentencing. The Coalition to End Broken Windows is organizing to quote, advocate for the end of broken windows policing and their redistribution of resources from criminalization to community support, such as truly universal transit access. Finally, the Fair Fares program is a citywide program organized by boy himself Bill de Blasio that gives some low-income New Yorkers a 50% discount on subway rides. This is not just a New York problem. This is happening everywhere. We need to make our public transit systems actually public. The only way we can do this is by decriminalizing fare evasion. Thanks for watching.